Hello world and a very warm welcome from our Steel Timber Sports studio in Munich, Germany. And we've got something very special coming up for you. And it's the premiere of the Steel Timber Sports Nations Cup. Meaning that we're going to start off with 16 rookies now at 2 o'clock. And we're going to move on to the pros who are going to compete at 1900 hours. Together they will be the champions of the Nations Cup. And with me, of course, is Troy Mannering, who will hopefully explain to us why this new format is going to be very special tonight. Yeah, it's going to be really interesting because what we're doing here is we have two representatives from each nation in the rookies as well as in the pros. So what's going to happen is it's going to be accumulated points between each of these representatives. So there is a potential that one nation could walk away with the entire let's call it golden cup here. Um, but uh, basically it's like each nation has to do the best they can competing against each other as well as the other nations. And then that nation from the rookies and as well from the pros at the end of our day today, this evening after the pros starting at 7 PM is going to be awarded the nation's cup 2021. So this is a really interesting way to do things. And it's where we can, uh, it's almost like a, you know, a, a way to really boast for your nation and, and you can have it on, on your chest and go, ha oh, ha, this is we are, where we are and what we're doing and who we are. So it's going to be a fun one to watch. <laughs> I like the, ha oh, ha, the big bear shout out. But, but of course, you know, all the pros are going to be watching the rookies now because all the points that the rookies collect are going to be very important for the pros tonight. So Absolutely. I think uh, that really is a big, big challenge for, for, for the youngsters as well as the pros. And no of pressure. course, uh, we know no pressure. At all. And of course, uh, we've got someone live at the Kessler House in Munich, because this is where our stars are going to be competing. And uh, hopefully, Pia, you can hear and see us now. How are you doing? Is everything all right? I'm fine. I'm feeling amazing. A heartfelt hello and welcome from my side from, from this unique location. Well, where am I? As I, you just mentioned, I'm in Germany, in Munich, at the Motor World. And as you might tell from the old machinery behind me and the heavy steel framework, I'm at the Castle House. If you've participated in the last championship last week, you already know that, but I'm going to tell you anyways why this site is so special. It has been est established 100 years ago and still some original things are here, like the old chimney, the boiler plate and the crane, or rail crane. Well, because of this site, a real quick industrial de development was possible for Munich, for all the places around Munich, and it was built to be a powerhouse by Theodor Fischer and Otto Ernst Schweitzer. It was pretty much a lot of use. Then it was unused and empty for 10 years, but since 2007, it's back. 2007, it has had its comeback as an event venue. Legends like Pink and companies like Microsoft and Music Awards have had events in here. And today, Steel Timber Sports with our very own future legend. Speaking of, I think they are ready. They've been preparing themselves the whole morning. The crew on site is ready too. I'm ready. I hope you guys are ready. And I'm handing back to you guys. See you at the first interview with one of the Yurukis. Well, thank you very much, Pia. It looks like she's having a great time in Kesselhaus. And Troy, Kesselhaus always indicates to me that... Uh, you might be able to get a drink and to have a party at a place like that. And the party is well, what we're looking for today. It is a party location, and we're going to have a party on uh, on that stage pretty soon with these athletes coming out. We're going to meet all our rookies shortly, um, but definitely looking forward to seeing how this one pans out. And, uh, you know, I, I, I kind of joked a little bit, no pressure there, but really for these young guys, I mean, I think wow. one of our youngest athletes is 16 years old. It's going to be a lot of, of um, power and pressure for them to, you know, take everything over to the next level and, and make those moves, especially with the pros coming up after them. So there's going to be a lot going on for these guys today, and uh, we're going to get a chance to meet them shortly. Yeah, but you know that the big guys are watching you. So uh, let's take a look at our 16 athletes. Like you mentioned, eight nations, two athletes uh, competing for the country. We're going to take a look at all of them right now. All right, Adam Bjorns. 
Um, I don't know. I'm going to murder some names again today. Hopefully not. But uh, <laughs> sounded here, great to me. You could see uh, fourth place at the Nordic Rookie Championship 2019, second place at the Swedish Rookie Qualifier 2021. Doesn't have a whole lot of international uh, um, pedigree under his belt, so this is going to be a great opportunity for him to really start to get out there and get his name out there. And you know, the Swedes are putting some fantastic talent out there into. Oh, yeah into steel timber sports so i'm looking forward to you mentioning that name ha <laughs> i think i got this one quinton verhert oh nice yeah second place at the benelux rookie championship in 2021 belgian rookie champion 2021 um so you know again these guys a lot of them coming into international competition for the first time there's going to be some pressure on them the nerves are going to be playing a big role mike brockman um, you know, coming out of Holland, uh, winner of the Benelux Rookie Championship 2021. Man to watch for sure today. And a Dutch Rookie Champion 2021. So uh, also out of Benelux, uh, Belgium, Netherlands, Luxembourg, there's a lot of great talent coming out of there. Then we have Sebastian Bateau. He got 11th at the uh, Rookie European Championship recently. Um, and that was one of his very first international competitions. And you can see 56th place at the European Rookie Ranking in 2019. So he has made a huge step up in his level in the last little while. Then we have Robin Konitz, Konicek. Um, he's really new out of Austria. Second place at the Austrian Rookie Qualifier 2021. Seventh at the National Championships in 2019. And you can see fourth place at the Rookie Swiss Cup. Uh, we saw Lugas Vagasreiter. He was messing around at the Rookie Academy as well, having some fun over there. First place at the Austrian Rookie Qualifier 2021 and 12th place at the Rookie World Championship. And look at his arms. Yeah. Mighty arms. I mean, he's got those Popeye uh -huh. forearms, and you really <laughs> yeah. need that for those chopping disciplines. Then we have Edwin Carlson. Now, he's a guy that we've seen kind of coming up slowly but surely. Uh, seventh place at the Rookie World Championship 2021 and first place at the Swedish Rookie champ uh, Qualifiers. Another German uh, in the mix here, Danny Fielwert. Um, there you can see, again, a lot of these guys are cutting their teeth for the very first time in international competition. So seeing them come out here and giving them an opportunity to be on the same stage with the pros as well as being on an international level. I mean, yeah, okay, it's European-wide, but nevertheless, it's, it's a great thing for them. Then we have Robin Haas. Now, he's a guy that's got a little bit more experience under his belt in the international side of things, and you can see he's got some pretty good qualifications coming your way. Second place at the Swiss Rookie Cup, 10th place at the Rookie World Championship in 2021. And then we have Michael Perrin. Uh, yeah, he's got a French-sounding name, but he's coming from Italy. Uh, fourth place at the Rookie European Championship 2021. That was just a week ago. And first place at the Italian Championship in 2020. He's got some pedigree. Plus, he's a real tall guy with long arms, and he's got a lot of power. Loic Vincent, well, what can you say about this guy? Second place at the Rookie World Championship, or the, uh, the Rookie European Championship last week. Uh, second on the podium there with the silver medal. He came oh so close, but was just a thread away from being on top of that podium, and uh, we're looking forward to uh, seeing how he, he does. Ah, Alessandro Ciapponi. Oh, I love name. saying love that name. name. It's yeah. just one of the best <laughs> names to say because it makes you feel fun and, and uh, happy saying it. Uh, second place at the Italian Championship. Fifth place at the Rookie World Championship 2021. He's had six appearances so far in Rookie Cups, so he has got a little bit of a pedigree behind him as well. Look for him to do well today. Uh, and Mikolai Grunwald. Uh, I mean, there's the Grunwald family in the mix all over the map here. And I think we're going to have two Grunwalds in the rookies along with his, uh, I don't know if it's brother or cousin, but don't quote me on either one of those. Simon is there as well. And Oliver Reinhardt, he is the current European champion for the Rookie Cup uh, and uh, first place Swiss Rookie Cup. And he also got a world record for the springboard at the Rookie European Championship or the Rookie European Cup last week. Good, man. Uh, so great job by him. Then we have Marcel Steinkemper. Uh, it should be Steinkemper, you know, fighter. <laughs> Boy, he is a battler when he gets out there. He is so strong, so solid. Uh, one of those guys that we're really going to be looking forward to seeing in the future. And here's the other Grunwald in the mix representing Poland. 
uh, Simon Grunwald. Seventh place at the Czech International Rookie Cup 2020, Polish Rookie Champion 2021. So uh, again, you know, plenty of uh, skill and talent coming out of this family. And uh, it's going to be really exciting to see how these rookies handle, A, the pressure of a lot of them being first time on the international stage, and B, knowing, like you said, Marcus, that there's going to be all these pros from their countries watching them and hoping that they're going to score some good points for this European Nations Cup today. It's going to be a long day, but it's going to be a really fun day as well because there's going to be a ton of action coming our way. Well, having said that, we're ready to rock and roll. It's time to take a closer look at the competition format and the first tool and discipline. The Steel Timber Sports Rookie Competition. All athletes will compete in four disciplines. The maximum points awarded for each discipline result from the number of participating athletes. The first discipline is the stock saw. The fastest athlete will receive points equal to the total number of athletes competing down to one point for the last place in each discipline. The second event is the standing block chop. Points remain the same, awarded based on times, and as with all events, any rule infraction will result in a disqualification and the athlete will receive zero points for that discipline. As the third discipline, every competitor will need to show their skill in the single button. And in the underhand chop, it's the athlete's last chance to claim valuable points. The points from all disciplines are accumulated and the athlete with the highest point total wins the competition. Underhand Chop In the past, the underhand chop technique was used to split logs. Standing on a horizontally anchored block, the athletes use an axe to cut through a 30 centimeter log. The block has to be worked from both sides. The axes used in timber sports definitely can't be bought at your local hardware store. Made from special steel, the blade is hand sanded with an angle of 13 to 16 degrees. It's custom built and carefully adjusted for each competition. The weight is around three kilos and it's about 80 centimeters long. The blade is so sharp that you could shave with it. So our athletes in Kesselhaus are ready to rock and roll and these are the heats. Uh, Let's take a look at the first one. Uh, Bruins uh, taking on Verhardt. Then we have Brockman against uh, Batsu. Konicek against Wagesreiter. Kalsen, Fielbert. Haas versus Perrin. Vincent uh, Capioni. Grönwald against Reinhardt. And finally, Steinkämpfer taking on Grönwald. All right, so... Guys getting in the mix here for underhand chop. Now, you saw them setting up their uh, saws there earlier on, but it's actually going to be the underhand chop here to start the day off. I thought it was going to be actually stock saw, which means that our graphic would have been incorrect, and it is, in fact, going to be stock saw, so it's going to be two French guys going up against each other first. My list tells me I've got two French guys, Louis Foisson and Sebastian Bateau, out there. And remember, these guys are cutting two quick cookies off of that 10-centimeter section on the block. And uh, that was quick by both of them. So uh, we get this uh, graphic and start order situation straightened out here, and we'll have something a little bit more clean. And it does look like it is, in fact, Louis Foisson on the left-hand side on stand A. So let's just get that confirmed here shortly. Okay. 
All right, taking quickly a look back at the slow-mos and uh, still clarifying things here, but I do believe that uh, our starting order and uh, graphic was uh, not correct on screen, though. So because we are in stocks, uh, Loic Voisson going up against Sebastian Bateau, that will be one country battle right off the bat. Unfortunate situation there for both of these guys to have to be going against each other, but it is about the time here and accumulating as many points as these athletes can through each of the rounds. So Loic Voisson with the faster saw at 1154 and Sebastian Bateau not that far behind with an 1175 and nice to see this too Sebastian Bateau actually logged in a personal best time on stock saw so very very good job by him uh, we'll have to take another look at the starting order here with heat number two coming up will be Robin Konacek going up against Simon Grunwald so an Austrian going up against a pole and look at that Simon Grunwald, just 16 years young. <coughs> so now if you're unfamiliar with steel timber sports, this is a section where these guys get to start the saw, warm it up, make sure that everything is blowing properly in there, and then they can leave this saw running on the ground. That's a little bit different to the hot saw, which we'll see with the pros later on. And uh, they have those special pads to have that saw sitting on so it doesn't hop around. And here we go, heat number two. Three, two, one, go. Oh, really quick by Grunwald. He gets on that cut very nicely to start things off. Konacek looking to catch up. Oh, but Grunwald had a cut out there, so he had to restart on his second cut. And he's still fast. Look at that. He gets through in 7.68. Now, I do believe that that is an incorrect time right there because that can't be true. He had a cutout. He had to restart. And so that means that uh, his time will be more around 12, 13 seconds. Uh, but both of these guys, really, really nice. Uh, the problem there with Simon Grunwald on the right-hand side. Yeah, there you go. 12.91 seconds. Is, uh, and we'll hopefully see this in the slow-mo. He actually had a really, really great start. His first cut and, uh, and picking up the saw and getting on top of that block was very quick, much quicker than Robin Konacek, but he did cut out on his way back up on the upstroke. So let's have a look here what happened. There we see Konacek, good position with the hands. How quick was he right there to get that saw up into position? Great start by Grunwald there, and you can see the two different styles. More blade down and more engine even. And do we get to see the slow-mo of the cutout? Doesn't look like it, no, but we have that second cookie clean, and both cuts are good, so the times will count. So for both of these guys, unfortunate for Simon Grunwald, though, because it could have been about two, maybe even three seconds faster without that cutout. All right, our next heat in the blocks will be Danny Fielwert up against Mike Brockman. And I'm here with the first interview. Really quick, wie hast du dich gefühlt? Du bist quasi die, die Zukunft dieses Sports. Wie hast du dich gefühlt gerade eben? Ja, natürlich, es wird schon ein wenig was vor dir vorausgesetzt. Also es ist ein bisschen ein Druck ist schon da, das muss man ehrlich sagen. Und ja... Mal schauen, wie es weitergeht. Die erste Disziplin, ja, zumindest kein Dick Unit, das ist einmal sehr wichtig. Und jetzt geht es dann weiter mit Standing Block. Mal schauen. I'll translate for a second. Um, so he said he's a lot of under pressure because he's not competing for him, but for the team. But he's keen for the discipline and he'll see how it goes, the Standing Block job. Well, um, wie bist du dich jetzt vorbereitet für's, für die nächste Disziplin? Ja, einmal Block natürlich visualisieren, Linien noch einmal, Konturen nachgehen und schauen einfach den perfekten Schwung, die Hüfte auflockern und dann einfach voll Fokus auf den Block, wo platziere ich meine Schläge und dann wird das schon funktionieren. Okay, so he's gonna take a close look at the wood block and he's gonna do some hip exercises to get warm and we'll, we'll follow you and be cheering for you. Back to the studio. <laughs> All right, next blocks ready and next heats coming out on to the stage. Heat number three with Danny Fielwert from Germany and Mike Brockmann from the Netherlands. 
Danny Fierwert will be on stand A on the left-hand side of your screen here, and Mike Brokman stand B on the right-hand side. A couple of guys that are pretty evenly matched up age-wise, size-wise, weight-wise, so uh, not really a major concern when we talk about the stock saw because this is a tool that comes directly off of the shelf, more or less, from any steel dealership. It's the MS661 saw, and uh, each of these saws is uh, tested thoroughly by a technician before the competition to make sure that everything is fair for all the athletes. So really, this is about technique, getting on that saw quickly, and making sure that you don't put too much pressure on it to stall, stall, uh, to stall that blade and make sure that chain keeps running. So good start by both of these guys here as I talk through the start, but Fielberg with a really nice first cut, barely any upswing on the transition. It looks like he's going to get this one in a pretty solid time, winning that battle. And it is a 1371 for Danny Fielvet and a 1375 for Mike Brockman. These are, of course, unofficial times as I call them out here, and we see them on screen, but they are only made official once our judge on stage gives the thumbs up for both stands. There you go. So those times are official. Danny Fielbert with a time of 13.56. Sits in fourth place at the moment in Stocksaw. And Mike Brokman uh, with a 16.07 after the adjustment of timing is down and in sixth place at the moment. Not out of the fight uh, by any stretch of the imagination, but he needs to consider how things are going to go with the standing block chop, the underhand chop, and the single buck. There's lots of action still to come for these rookies. And there you can see right there, perfect example. He got the saw up quickly, but he hovered over top of the block before he started to initiate the cut. And there is a cutout. That's what I talked about earlier on with uh, Simon Grunwald. He had that cutout and the same thing happened there. So it was about resetting the saw and making sure that cookie is complete. So it's very important to make sure that those cookies are complete and whole and not broken at all after that second cut is made. Otherwise, those cuts will not be valid and good. And a quick look into the Competition Control Center before we join us back here. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm going to start all that start uh, doing a little bit of practice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and honestly, I, I think that is very important. You taught me like a month ago or something that all you get from the core stability is very, very important for all the jobs. So yeah, absolutely. Why not? Let's yeah. <laughs> and not just not just in the in the in the chopping, but also in the Sawyer disciplines, especially when you're talking about the single buck later on in the competition. You'll see that two meter misery whip. These guys have to, to manage that thing through. But uh, yeah, that's it's uh, it's all about training and, and warming up and making sure you're fit for the show. Well, then let's find out uh, how the hip movement is going to work for Grunwald and uh, Perrin on XT. All right, here we go. I don't know, I'm, I'm thinking, Marcus, you and I should maybe uh, get ourselves into the mix here with, at the very minimum, the stock saw. We could probably handle that, huh? Well, I'd love to, to be honest, especially looking at, at Kessel House. I mean, this place looks absolutely fantastic. It'd be great. Maybe we can sneak in there. Yeah. Night later on and, and give it a try and tell everybody about it tomorrow at the Austrian Championships. Oh, really nice start by both of these guys. Grunwald on the left, Perrine on the right. Those cookies dropped almost at the same time. Very thin cookie by Perrine and he's got it with a nice time. Now look at that. The world record was 6.85 for the rookies. Perrine with an 11, five, uh, excuse me, an 11.85. So uh, he's a little off pace for the world record, but a good heat right there, and that puts him with that time in second place. After the adjustment, both cuts are actually good now, and after a timing adjustment from our competition control center, Michel, uh, Michelle, excuse me, Perrine with a 11.65 time. That's in second place behind Loic Boisson. Sebastian Bateau uh, in third place with 11.75. And as I mentioned, Sebastian Bateau with that uh, time is a personal best. And uh, Simon and uh, Mikolai Grunwald uh, they're sitting in fourth and fifth. So Mikolai in fourth with a time of 12.14 from that heat. And Simon Grunwald with a 12.91 from the heat previous. Uh, and you can see that final upstroke cut by Perrine. Just fantastic. 
And uh, he obviously had quite a bit of pressure there because that saw swung up as he came through yeah. the final bit of the cut. But he didn't uh, he didn't stall that blade, so it was perfect. It was uh, good I was job. just looking at that, but that uh, looks a bit scary to me, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> especially in slow motion. Uh, yeah. What doesn't look scary to me is the schedule that we have for this. Oh, year. Yes. There's so awesome. much steel timber sports coming up. Uh, we'll just give you a short glimpse of what to expect. Yeah. Any favorites, uh, Troy? Um, I don't say all of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's so many tough ones, but I really, I, I mean, I'm, I'm super excited about today's rookie stuff. And, uh, and anytime the rookies come up, you know, you got, you got a lot of things that are in the mix there that you, you're, it's a bit of a mystery. So there could be surprises. It could be any kind of, of fun things that pop up. But the rookies are the future of the events. The, the European Nations Cup is where we're at right now. The European uh, Nations doing battle against each other and the rookies in the mix here as well tomorrow. We've got the Austrian Pro Championships uh, from the same location at the Kessel House in Munich. So that should be a, a good one, too, because as an Austrian yourself, you know there's uh, fire in the bellies yes. of these guys when it comes to battling against each other. There's a ton of stuff going on this I, I summer. I like that there's fires in the bellies. And, of course, if you want to watch some of the old uh, competitions, why not? You know, everything is available online, and uh, maybe if you want to... Take a look at Amazon Prime every now and then. You can see Steel Timber Sports. So uh, make sure to watch the new competitions. Make sure to watch the old competitions. And make sure to watch the rookies because we've got the next heat coming up for you right now. So entering our stage area, Oliver Reinhardt and Quentin Verhert. Now, Oliver Reinhardt has, uh, I, I don't know, he's got a gold brick somewhere in there, a golden horseshoe. This boy has some serious luck, but he also can depend on a mega amount of skills. He's got winning in the blood, it seems like, and uh, he's a guy to watch today for sure to really represent Switzerland in the best possible way. And it's not going to be long before we're going to see that young man competing against the pros. So let's see how he does. So Fahad was actually a little bit quicker on the saw, and you can see these guys are sharing a similar style as far as how they... Oh, no! A bit of a stall there by Reinhardt, and that left the door open for Quinton Fahad to get through, and he was just a hair faster than Oliver Reinhardt as they checked the cookies. And one thing you'll hear a lot in timber sports is thin to win. So if they can make those cookies thin, there's not as much binding on the saw as they come through, which makes it a little bit easier and therefore faster. Okay, Good. So Oliver Reinhardt has a 1326. That slips him into sixth place there. And uh, Quinton Fairhat with a 1349 just below him in seventh place as we take a look there really nice quick attack on the block by Fahat. he did a great job getting up there now let's see if this is reinhardt saw this is a reinhardt saw right here i believe we see the blade no no we don't see it unfortunately we don't get the slow-mo of that uh, quick stall but that's one of the things we talk about quite a lot in this discipline is making sure that you don't apply too much pressure, but you want to have enough pressure to make sure that saw, uh, saw keeps moving cleanly, but not so much that, that the, you know, the chain stops. Well, here we have the standings for the moment. Uh, any big surprises uh, for you, Troy? Or do you think this is more or less that what we we're about to expect from this competition so far. Uh, I'm a little bit surprised that Oliver Reinhardt didn't do better in the stock saw, but this isn't his strongest discipline by a stretch. So, I mean, that he's six, he's middle of the pack at the moment. Uh, otherwise, not really any major surprises, to be honest with you. Well, let's uh, keep on rocking back to the Kessel House. The next heat is ready. And that, of course, is Lukas Wagesreiter versus Alessandro Giapponi. Giapponi. <laughs> Excellent. This should be a nice battle. The two guys that uh, are pretty strong in this discipline, you can see their personal bests are also very close together, just over the 10-second mark. And they'll definitely be making improvements as time goes by. And uh, the thing is, is that Lukas Wagesreiter, you know, he's a, a real strong Sawyer here as well. So let's just see how the two of them go head-to-head. -head. Pony, it's a tough call on this one. It's really tough. We'll have to see how it folds out when they actually get going. All right, so here you can see Lucas Wagesreiter keeping his saw mid-block. 
Schiaponi quick on the upstroke, barely any swing as he transitioned. And it's Wagesreiter, who was just a hair faster than Schiaponi coming through up to the top of the second cut. It was a real nice battle between these two guys and some uh, fairly close times between them as well. Schiaponi with a 13.37. And Wagesreiter with a 13.15. Of course, these are unofficial until we get the thumbs up. And there seems to be a lot of discussion on Chiaponi's block right now. So hopefully oh, wow. both those cookies are good. Oh, no. We've got a yellow flag there. So let's see what they have to say here. Oh, yeah. There it is. To music in the background. Yeah. Dastardly. The yellow flag. All right, so we have our first disqualification of the competition, and unfortunately, that is Chiaponi, who gets the DQ for incomplete cookie. Now, maybe in the slow-mo, we'll have a chance to actually see where the cookie was incomplete. It didn't look like he cut over the line. Both of them were really fast on the pickup and initial attack of the log. And that is Chiaponi's cookie there. I'm wondering if he cut out at the top. It looks like he might have had a bit of an... Oh, yeah. It looks like he was coming at an angle towards the top. Is getting thinner as he came towards the top. So... Um but that is just a shame because that is just a lack of routine, if you ask me. Yeah. You know, he would have just stayed in that position, no problem at all. Maybe went to the side too early. And uh, yeah. maybe maybe Chiaponi can tell us uh, himself. I think Pia has got him in front of the microphone right now. Over to you guys and the Kessel House. Yes, I've got him right by my side, Alessandro Chiaponi. What is going on in your head right now? Like, what are you thinking? Yeah, I... I do a mistake when the sun I do the DQ, but I have to be prepared for the next hit uh, and continue my, my competition. Get it out of the head. I'm keen to watch you in the next heat. How do you prepare? What is your plan or strategy? Yeah, be focused. Only be focused. I'm sure you will do that. You will do great. Well, back to the studio. All right, so the go-ahead for our next heat to come on stage, heat number seven, and that is Robin Haas from Switzerland going up against Marcel Steinkamper from Germany. And this is a discipline where both of these guys are also very evenly matched. Steinkamper has the chance to work with some of the best stock sawyers in the world in Germany, and uh, so look for him to really try and do well in a discipline that he's going to want to have his stamp placed on. Meanwhile, Robin Haas, he is no slouch at all. So let's see how these two guys battle against each other. And as I mentioned earlier, you do get to start the saw. It does get to start running. But a couple of years ago, before the in, uh, institution of the pads underneath those saws, they used to bounce around a lot. So there was an added skill of being able to catch that saw before it ran away on you. Here we go. Even start. Steinkamper looking very good on that initial cut. But it's going to be Haas getting that first cookie dropped. Oh boy. Very, very close between the two. Robin Haas with a 13 13. Steinkamper with a 13 30. Again, really, really close. And we can see here the wood is quite fair because the times are all right on top of each other. All right, so Steinkamper is just moved ahead of Danny Fielwert in the rankings at the moment in 10th place with Robin Haas jumping up into 6th place with his time of 13.09 as we take a look back at the slow-mo here. See how quickly they got on those saws. My goodness, are these guys ever fast. And there was that first cookie drop by Robin Haas. Very nice job. And you could see... That last little pull from Steinkipper. They were so close together. And uh, we'll get a chance to see what the ranking is in stock saw here shortly before we move on to our final heat. And there you see Loic Voinsant with the time to beat so far in 
Michel Perrin in second and Sebastian Bateau in third. And you can see it's only 21 hundredths of a second off pace to the third position from first. And wow. we still have one more heat to go. And there you see uh, Alessandro Ciapponi with that unfortunate DQ. Otherwise, uh, could have had another clean competition right through, which we had the last time. All right. So we started off with a nation battling against each other, and we're finishing off the stock saw with a nation battling against each other. Our next heat, two Swedes going up against each other in heat number eight, Edvin Carlson up against Adam Jöns. Now you can see the personal best for Edvin Carlson is a good second faster than Adam Jöns. Let's see if he can actually bring that personal best to fruition here in this head-to-head -head Swedish battle. So he seems to be having trouble getting that saw started. Now finally does get it going. They only have a certain amount of time to get those saws started. And usually those saws are absolutely dependable. Here we go. Oh, big trouble for Edmund Carlson as that saw almost got away from him on the initial cut. Bjorn's looking very good, though, after struggling to get that saw started. He's got a nice flow, but it's going to be Carlson with a good final cut. And Bjorn's coming in just behind him. Wow, what a battle for Carlson off the hop. That saw bucked him like a Bronco. It pulled right into the block and he really need to jump on that thing to try and control it as best as possible. And you just saw the judge go by him and give him a grin. Hey, I saw that happen. That was crazy. All right. Both cuts are good. And that's Both cuts are good. So Edvin Carlson is moved into 13th there and Adam Bjorn's in 15th. Now, there, this is just the first discipline in round one for these guys, but uh, you can see there's a lot of shifting around. Now, let's take a look at the slow-mos here and hopefully we can get a quick look here. Oh yeah, he struggled with that thing. It was wiggling and waggling. It looked like a cat's tail as he was thinking about catching a mouse and that thing just jumped right into the block. But there was a really nice transition by Carlson and he didn't waste any time on getting a nice clean upstroke. And there you could see Bjorns with uh, also struggling on the upstroke with a little chain stall, but not very much. It was super short as we take a look at the stock saw results. Well, here we go. Uh, Vincent still up on top, like you mentioned before, before Perrin and then Batso. I think these three athletes are definitely going to be the ones to watch for the next two disciplines, at least. Uh, and uh, here we have, uh, at the end of the table, Boyan and Capioni. Capioni, of course, uh, the only athlete with a DQ so far, so he's going to have a lot of pressure at, yeah. the, at the next discipline. Well, he's got to work his butt off in order to get the points that he needs to move on to the next round. So, I mean, that's the problem with having a, a slower time in the first discipline. you got to work harder in the next discipline. But some guys, these, sometimes these guys work off their strengths rather than their weaknesses, which is an intelligent choice. Absolutely. And Carlson, uh, he's the man we're going to talk to now in Kesselhaus. Uh, Pia, what uh, do you have for us? Yes, we're back at the Castle House and I've got Edwin Carlsen right next to me, the Swedish, one of the Swedish athletes. You've done this quite a lot. Now, what is your expertise on the last heat? Like, what is your thought? Oh, it didn't go as planned. A little bit of a struggle in the start, but yeah. <laughs> but you're happy now with the result? Ah. Oh. Could have done better, I think. But there are a lot of heats, more yeah. to go. Um, what is your strategy now? Just focusing on the other disciplines. Yeah. Okay, so stay in focus. Thank you for your honesty. And we'll hand back to you to Munich. <laughs> Well, I have to say, I love this man's attitude. Yeah. He, he, he got position 13. That is not good enough. I can do better. I'm going to focus on the next disciplines. That's the way to go, right? Yeah. I mean, 
it's just like in any sport, you know, if you if you have a bad run, if you have a bad time, if you if you don't get the goal that you want to get, you kind of have to put that out of your mind and move on to the next thing that you've got to do. You've got to refocus because if you're always thinking about the thing you did wrong and the thing that you did before on your next discipline, then you're in trouble. You might as well just throw in the axe now because there's no point. <laughs> just one short thing before we move on to the next discipline. Would you rather be standing behind your opponents or in front of your opponents or do you think it doesn't make a difference? I think everybody's got a different headspace as far as that's concerned. Some guys like to lead from in front and some guys like to lead from behind. Now, it's funny to say that because how do you lead from behind? Well, there are guys out there that are so confident in their chopping skills, for instance, that if they have a halfway decent time in the, uh, in the stock saw and they know that they're going to be lined up against a guy that's maybe not as strong in the underhand chop or the standing block chop that they can come from behind and maybe take over. So, you know, it's two different schools of thought. Yeah, and uh, next discipline, of course, is the standing block chop and how standing block chop works. Uh, we'll take a look at this and you'll know all about it. Standing block chop. At the standing block chop, the felling of a tree with an axe is simulated. A vertically positioned wooden block with a diameter of 27 centimeters has to be cut through from both sides. A powerful and precise swing with the axe is the premise of a good result. So here we have the start list uh, for this discipline. It will be Quinten Ferhardt taking on Adam Björns. Then we'll have Mike Bröckmann take on Sebastian Barzot. Then the Austrian duel, Robin Konicek against Lukas Wagesreiter, followed by Marcel Steinkämpfer from Germany against the Italian uh, Michel Perrin. Then we're going to have Denny Fielbert against Mikulay Grönwald, Germany against uh, Poland. Uh, Switzerland's Robin Haas take on Italians Alessandro Tieponi. And uh, then in Heat 7, the Swedish Edwin Carlson take on the French Loic Vincent. And finally, in Heat 8, uh, Switzerland versus Poland, Oliver Reinhardt take on Simon Grönwald. A lot to look forward to, and uh, we're ready to rock and roll. All right, so Quentin Verhert up against Adam Björns. And uh, we've got a nice little heat going on here. And, uh, you know, you'll see that these times aren't uh, on the on the world stage fantastic. But remember, these guys are rookies. And this is a discipline where targeting power and precision are so important. On the right hand side, you've got Adam Björns on the left hand side, Quinton Verheert. What's really important here is to know when to switch over to the other side and really start working on the, on the other side of that block. Now remember, as you saw in the description, these blocks have to be worked from both sides. There is a time limit, and it is going to be Björns moving over to the other side of his block first. So as far as that's concerned, he's got the advantage having moved over to the other side. Fahad still working on the first side, looking like he maybe wants to go a bit deeper, makes a last-minute decision there. I think that was like, eh, okay, I'll go over, why not? And uh, Fahat is, I think he's questioning the situation there, but Björns is looking really good on this. It might be a personal best time for him as well. He's just got to block that, and he does it. Oh, yes, there it is. Personal best under a minute now, 53.47. So he has just gotten past his previous personal best, which was over a minute. Fahat, on the other hand, is struggling, coming past the one-minute mark. And... Um, yeah, I think he second-guessed himself a little bit too much in this discipline. He didn't go as deep as maybe he probably should have on the first side. And you can see the cuts there. They're kind of all over the map. So this is where that time and, uh, and learning really where you're targeting and how to be super precise on these cuts comes into play. And that's a big deal for these guys to learn this over time coming from the rookies. And there you see that time limit that I talked about earlier means that he's gone past the 1 minute 30 mark to make this. And that is a DQ for him. So our second DQ of the competition has just happened with Quinton Ferhert. That's going to be a disappointing result for him, but a great job by Adam Björns with the fastest time of the day so far as the first athlete out okay. under a minute and a personal best you for the young Swede. Third. You had a DQ out of time. The time limit is 1.30. You took more. All right, so Quinton Ferhert with a DQ for being uh, time exceeded. 
And uh, let's take a little bit of a look back at the slow-mos here. Really nice start by both of these guys, actually. And it looked good for both of them as they got in there. They started slabbing out nicely. But it was Bjorns that just really had that great targeting. His precision of hits was good. He didn't overpower the hits and get the axe stuck in there too much. For Hat there, he looked like he might have actually been a bit tired. He was using more of his shoulders and his back to make those blows and uh, not as much coming from the leg and the hips. And you can see here the Swedish athlete Adam Björns was using his whole body, pushing off that back leg, twisting his hips and putting a lot of really accurate power into that block and he did a great job our first athlete out there i mean okay it's the first heat he's gonna have the fastest time that's the time but to still, beat. Time but under still one minute a is personal good. best is always 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 good to see no matter if it's not really awesome time or not but this was great i mean he he basically obliterated his previous personal best which was well over a minute so good job and and uh, two things i noticed adam Bjorns, he really chucked out big big pieces of uh, of wood like on, on the first four or five strokes, yep. I thought, wow, I mean, what's going on? Yep. So so the precision you talked about is very, very important. And of course, <laughs> the physique at the end, you could see that last job, he was like, oh, thank the Lord, it's over. <laughs> because yeah. you're exhausted. I mean, yeah. he, he did a fantastic job. And I don't think that too many athletes are going to be under one minute today. Yeah, it's a tough one. I mean, you know, it's it's uh, it's a really difficult discipline and, and particularly the standing block chop because the angle of the axe has to be just right. If it's too much or too little, you could bounce it off the block and then it's dangerous and you don't get the time, you don't get the cut. So yeah, good job by him. So back to the Kesselhaus, back to the next heat, which is heat number two between Mike Brückmann and Sebastian Batzo. Okay, a couple of practice swings by both of these guys. And wow, Sebastian Bateau with a personal best of 32 seconds. This would be a fun one to watch as they get into it right away. Mike Brockman going for two hits down below. Sebastian Bateau starting at the bottom, moving to the top, and then doubling up each of the hits at those locations, slabbing out nicely. Brokeman with his back to us on the left-hand side of your screen, though, so it's tough to see what he's actually doing there. But Bateau looking very good as he's getting in deep and he's moving over to the other side at the 22nd mark. I don't think he's going to make his 32nd uh, personal best, but that uh, could have been perfectly good wood at the time. But Brokeman is now over to the other side of his block as well. And uh, thinking Bateau might be dropping his block before Brokeman. There's a little skip that I was talking about. Brokeman had the angle just a little bit off, but both of these guys battling hard now. Coming up on the 45 second mark, passing it, and it's Bateau getting close. Could be four or five more drives by Bateau to get it off of there. One more should do it. And he's got it at 52-22, and he's just gone faster than Adam Bjorns. Let's see what the time says when it's adjusted. Oh, excuse me, 55-22. I think I need glasses here. And... Brokeman with a time of 102.70. So he's inside the 130 mark. And look at these guys, winded. And again, it's one of those things that you learn coming from being a rookie, going into the pro level, how to conserve that energy and use your body efficiently. All right, so there we have it. Uh, Sebastian Bateau with an official time adjusted to 54.89. That means Adam Bjorns is still on top by just 1.79 seconds. Brokman sitting in third place with a 102.52. So we got two guys under the one minute mark, but so far the time to beat is still belonging to the young Swede. So you know that the pros from Sweden are going to be looking at that and rubbing their hands together going, ha ha ha. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Yeah. yeah. You can see here his technique is very good, actually. He just came over to the other side there and started hammering on the backside, but uh, it was Sebastian Bateau who was just a little bit quicker, and these last couple of drives to get that block off were just fantastic. But you could tell he was getting tired. As you get tired, you start to get lazy with your body positioning. You know, you stand up a little higher. You're not using your hips. You're not driving off that back leg, and you start to use your shoulders and arms a little bit more than you should. So there is our first set of results here with only one DQ so far in this particular discipline. And in the overall standings, that shifts it around a little bit. Sebastian Bateau on top with 29 points, not that far behind, 9, 10, 11 points, excuse me, Adam Bjorns. But there's still plenty of action coming our way with heat number three in 
this discipline coming up next. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, Batu having uh, the overall lead, I think he's the man we should talk to. And uh, I've heard that Pia has him by her side. So Pia and Sebastian, let's hear it from you guys. Yes, he's right by my sa side, Sebastian Batu. Um, dans la dernière, oh, I'm translate in a second. Um, dans la dernière série, tu as une personal best et tu fais partie de l'équipe nationale. Est-ce que tu es mis sous pression par ça? Oui, quand même un petit peu. Ça met la pression. On essaie de faire avec, on la gère, on la gère comme on peut. So I asked if he's feeling a bit under pressure because he's competing for the team and not for himself. And he said yes, um, but he's trying his best and he keeps doing that. Um, and la seconde question, <laughs> oui. Um, quels, sont tes, quels sont tes attentes pour le reste de la compétition? Ben, je vais essayer de me débrouiller comme je peux et faire mon maximum pour arriver à, à conserver ma place. Merci pour votre temps. <laughs> Well, I asked if he has what his expectations are for the following heats, and he said he will give his best, his maximum, and just be great like he was until now. So back to the studio. <laughs> All right. Heat number three, and Robin Konacek up against Lukas Vagasreit. A couple of guys that are pretty solid in this discipline, Marcus. I'm looking forward to seeing this one. Well, of course, they know each other very well, so mm -hmm. this is going to be an interesting one, because I think this always gives it this little bit of extra if you're fighting against somebody you know. Yeah. Well. yeah, absolutely. We call it the battle of the 49th parallel in North America, Canada versus the U.S. It's sort of similar here, <laughs> Germany against Austria. Stand to your timber. Three. So right away you can see these guys are both getting into it really hard. Nice big pushes off that back leg, driving that axe into the block. Really accurate hits and you can see the difference between accurate hits and hits that are just sort of all over the map as those two wedges that you see forming in the block are almost smooth completely and that means these guys are hitting at each stroke almost exactly in the same spot. Bad example right there, but that's what I mean uh, generally. And these guys are both really going at us, us uh, with big, big heavy blows. Lukas Wagesleiter on the backside of his block, done it in a fantastic time. Oh my goodness, 34.55 for Lukas Wagesleiter. That was quick. I don't even think he realized how fast that was. We're going to have to take a closer look at that and see what the official time will be after adjustment. And now you can see Konacek is getting tired. He's breathing heavy. He's using mostly his arms and his shoulders to try and drive that axe through. He's not pushing off that back leg as much. And that results in the axe getting stuck and a bit lazy with the angle. And uh, that could be dangerous as far as blade skips or... or uh, that axe coming away from the block. You can see a big slab came off there, though, and still trying to get through inside the 1 minute 30. He's still got a, a few seconds left, and it looks like he's getting close, but he's got to make it happen quickly if he doesn't want to have a DQ, and it's, uh, wow, it's so close. Hopefully, he can do it. Crossing our fingers for this man. Come on, you can do it, buddy. There it is! Yeah. Woohoo! Nice. You can feel so for these oh, guys, can't you? Um, man. I, I mean, I'm getting nervous just watching that because I definitely wanted to have him have his points there, you know, and have a time. The DQ is the worst. Oh, yeah, nobody. So does. good job by him to finally get through there, but he was really struggling at the end there. So Robin Konacek with an unofficial 127.96 and Lucas Vargas with a blistering time. So there you go, and you know what I'm surprised to see here? Lucas Wagesreiter's time of 33.92, uh, not a personal best. So what does that tell you about how quickly he can get through the block normally? And you can see here Lucas pushing off that back foot really nicely as he started off. And it was the same thing for uh, Konacek as well, but then he just started to get tired towards the end of the block. So this is why it's so important for these guys to really make sure they're training is not just power training in the off season. You want to make sure that your conditioning is almost marathon-like so that you can keep pushing your muscles and making sure that those hits are clean and accurate every single time. But this was a really, really nice battle here by these two guys, but Lucas Vagasreit, who you saw there, just dropping that block at 33.92 with the time to beat. Whew, that's going to be a tough one to beat for these guys. 
very, very fast. I'm still amazed that Lukas Vagasreich's 3392 isn't a personal best for him. Oh, well, I just looked it up. It's 2799. Goodness gracious, O'Malley. Yep. That's... What are you going to do about that then? <laughs> that's, uh, that's very bananas. impressive. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. I could barely cut a loaf of bread in 27 seconds, let alone a log. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> Great stuff. And that's all they're talking about. That's the rookies. That's the future. And yeah. in this case, this was very special because it was Austria against Austria. But of course, they're just fighting for points. They are fighting for time. Mm -hmm. uh, and at the end of the day, this is a nation thing. You know, these are eight nations competing for the Nations Cup. So all the points that the rookies collect are going to be very, very valuable for the pros who are going to start competing at uh, 1900 hours at 7 p.m. So this all adds up together and uh yeah let's see how it works out in the next team good luck guys let's yeah, excuse me i said austria germany earlier didn't i but it was austria yeah, austria austria, austria but thank you worry. for that and correcting me that's uh that was a faux pas hoax in from my side hey <laughs> unbelievable so speaking of germany uh, there we go marcel steinkamper in the mix here up against michel perrin now michel perrin is a very tall guy so this should be an advantage for him as the Italian will have a lot of opportunity to really come from far back with that axe. Steinkemper working that very nicely. Really, really good job. But Michel Perrin already moving over to the other side. Steinkemper about two strokes behind Perrin now. So this is going to be a bit of a game of catch-up for Steinkemper as Perrin has got that axe head moving quickly and really not wasting any time to get as many blows as possible. But holy smokes, folks, we got a personal best for Marcel Steinkemper with 2103. It's good wood today for him. Oh, my goodness. And he has just jumped up into the lead in standing block chop. So we have a personal best on both of these stands, actually, with a 2136 for Michel Perrin as well. So two personal bests in this heat. But Marcel Steinkemper with an absolutely blistering time, and now it's been adjusted to 2091. Unbelievable. Honestly, I can't believe this. His uh, best time so far was 2408, which also is a fantastic time. But to, yeah. to go even, even better than that. He uh, just obliterated that time. Wow. Great job by the German and by the Italian. Both of these guys under the 32nd mark. And you can see here, they just both went for it. There's that first blow by Steinkamper, the first blow by Perrin as well. And yeah, you could see Steinkamper really knows what's going on. And there's a perfect example of the accuracy I was talking about. Each and every blow is right on the wedge. And you could see it wasn't far behind. Maybe we'll get another view of both of these guys dropping their blocks here. I don't know. Unfortunately not. But Steinkamper just really powering off that back leg, twisting through the hips. Just fantastic blows. And right there, the final blow for the top time. And Marcel Steinkamper moves into the top spot in standing block. And that also puts him into fourth place in the overall standing so far. So he's in a really good position at the moment, coming into a couple of disciplines later on that are definitely his strength. And there you see Marcel Steinkemper sitting in fourth. Lukas Vargasreiter just ahead of him in third. Sebastian Bateau in second. And Michel Perrin in top spot after that good time from him in the standing block chop as well. So things are turning out very interesting for these rookies. As I said, you know, anything and everything can and will happen. So it's, uh, it's making it fun and more interesting as we go along. And you're absolutely right. There's Danny Fielbert uh, against uh, Nikolai Grönwald coming up in our next heat. Uh, maybe something you can tell us about the difference uh, of standing block chop uh, rookies compared to the pros? At this point, with these times, I don't know if I could tell you anything different. I mean, these guys are, yeah, I mean... That's why I'm asking. Kick, this is Kicking butt and taking names. Uh, <laughs> I mean, the pros, they have times that are also really, really fast, but hey, these rookies are so close, it's not even funny. Three. Two, one, go! All right, these two guys both have personal best just over the 22nd mark. So, Grunwald, Fielwert, let's see if uh, this is going to uh, come down to the wire for these two guys as well. Grunwald moving over to the other side of his block right away. I didn't see the picture of Fielwert, but he's also over there. It looks like he was maybe a stroke behind. They're both passing the 21 second mark now, but it's going to be close for both of these guys. Oh, wow! Fielwert with a 24.77, Grunwald with a 24.75.
That is about as close as a battle gets. Fantastic job by both of them. And Danny Fielwehr jumps up into second place. Grunwald slips into third ahead of Michel Perrin and Lucas Wagesreiter in the standing block chop results. And they've got thumbs up from the judges. Our adjustments are looking good as well. So the official time is Denny Fielwert with a 24.50 and Mikolai Grunwald with a 26.82. Troy, I have to say I am more than surprised at these times. Yeah. Thinking about all the pressure, thinking about being up on this uh, big, big stage with a new format, I, I was expecting times around a minute and a lot of athletes being on top of a minute. And, and now we take a look at this and we've got one, two, three, four, four athletes under 30 seconds. Yeah. And That's we've crazy. also had a couple of personal bests drop as well. Um, but the thing that, I mean, it still surprises me that Lucas Vargas, I had his time of 33.92, wasn't a personal best for him. But, you know, he's uh, obviously been training on this discipline quite a lot, as have all of these guys, uh, which is clear from the way that they're performing today. And we know that they do a lot to work with the wood to make sure that they have really fair wood. And uh, obviously this wood is chopping very nicely in the Kessel House today. So I'm going to say conditions are probably as good as it gets. And there you could see those big blows from Danny Fiovet. Now we move on to Robin Haas going up against Alessandro Chiapponi. Now this is an opportunity for Alessandro Chiapponi to really try and make up some ground after a disqualification in the stock saw. He's also got a very good personal best time of 20 seconds and change. So this could be a discipline where he makes a bit of a comeback. Unfortunately, that score of a DQ means he has zero points, so it's going to be a hard job for him in general from the competition standpoint from uh, now on. Two, one, go! Robin Haas was just a little bit quicker on the initial drive, but Chiapone right there with him. chiapone has got a quick axe. He's moved over to the other side already. Robin Haas is still working on side number one now. He's come in about four strokes behind Chiapone, and this is a discipline where Chiapone tends to excel. And he's very, very strong, getting in deep on that side. Nice job for Chiapone with a 21-11. And that is great. That puts him in second place at the moment. Robin Haas does it in 27-10. And that moves him into fifth place in the standing block chop. Two really good results for these guys. And we're already well under the 30-second mark for a bunch of our athletes today. And that just tells me everything I need to know about the class of these rookies moving on to the next phase of their careers in steel timber sports. Okay, protests are good. Yeah, we always like to hear that. Yeah, absolutely. It's not very often that we're seeing DQs in the standing block shop. The only time that we really see a DQ in the standing block shop is if an athlete starts ahead of the actual go. And that's that doesn't happen very often. These guys are so well practiced on getting that backswing ready to go so that by the time they're partway through that first drive towards the block that the go is already spoken or the gun is already shot. So, but a really great job. And you can see these guys just slabbing out massive pieces of wood from that block. Chiapone, he got a little bit stuck right there, but it didn't seem to affect him too much. On the other hand there, Robin Haas got a little bit stuck in there. Or excuse me. Yeah, it was Robin Haas that got a little bit stuck in there as we take a look at the standing block chop results and uh, maybe we'll get an overall as well and how that affects the overall standings here. So we've still got uh, one DQ with an exceeded of time and Konacek, boy, we were really rooting for him there with the three seconds to go or two and change to go before... Uh, his time runs out and he did manage to do it all right so we're not going to get an overall but just to give you a heads up in the overall standings Mikolai Grunwald Michel Perrin and Robin Haas are in one two and three positions as we go on stage now for our next standing block chop heat heat number seven with Edwin Carlson and Louis Croissant this is a very strong discipline for Louis Croissant so watch the Frenchman come on strong here Edwin Carlson no slouch though with a personal best time of 1925 Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go! 
So for the lead here, they need 27, uh, no, excuse me, 2086. That's the time from Alessandro Schiaponi in standing block chop. Wow. Boisson already on to the other side of his block. Carlson two strokes behind. Personal best for Boisson is just past. It's a 16 second mark there. 1925 for Carlson. And oh, one more blow for Voisson's going to do it at 2685. And Carlson, 29 26, says that last stroke it got him a little bit off balance and he had to take a step to try and recapture his footing. You can see these guys take very, very good care of these super expensive and extremely sharp axes. Immediately after that, they'll put those sheaths back on to protect them. So there you go, 29.65 against the 26.60. Neither of these hitting their personal best times, but uh, made uh, for a nice switcheroo inside the standings. Edwin Carlson slipping into eighth place, and Loic Voinson up there in fourth place now with his time of 26.60 as we take a look here and uh, you could see Boisson not wasting any time as he got in not as deep as I would have expected on the first side and uh, really went for it and you could see both of them are now adopting or a lot of these athletes are now adopting that quick axe movement so that's been uh, basically something that's developed from Australia and New Zealand where the guys down there are just moving the axe with such incredible speed and everybody else is now trying to emulate that because really it's the only way they're going to get through these competitions and be able to win. But did you see that last stroke? How far that piece of wood was... Yeah. Oh, wow. I wouldn't want to be a, energy. I wouldn't want to be a baseball getting hit by him, <laughs> I'll tell you that much. <laughs> that is very impressive. Yeah, you can see the angle of his act chain, axe changes quite a lot through this heat, but obviously it didn't affect him that much. And uh, yeah, we move on to our next heat with Oliver Reinhardt and Simon Grunwald. He's only 16 years old, Simon Grunwald. 16 years old. And, and uh, his top time in standing block job, do you know it by heart? 13.20. 13.20. Unbelievable. At the Polish Rookie Championships 2021. So this definitely is the man to watch now. 16. Can't believe it. Ready. Big boy for 16, Stand though. Oh, yeah. He's fit. Three, two, one, go! So it's Simon Grunwald on the right hand side, Oliver Reinhardt on the left hand side. Oliver Reinhardt's been winning events for a long time now, so this is one more where that fire will be burning in his belly, and he wants to definitely have it. Simon Grunwald looking like he might be one, two strokes away. One stroke, 17.33. Holy smokes, folks, Oliver Reinhardt <laughs> with a 17.34.01 seconds behind. They are definitely going to have to do some correction in competition control center because that was just too close for even a photo finish. They're going to need those high-speed cameras today for that one. Wow, what a great battle. Oh, that is unreal. Okay, Oh, uh, really what celebrating a, what that in what Castle a, House. What a joker, <laughs> eh? <laughs> so Simon Grunwald with a 17.05 adjusted time for Oliver Reinhardt was a 17.25, so 20 hundredths of a second behind. And here you see the practice swings just before things get going. But look at Grunwald go. He's just so quick, so accurate, and getting over to the other side, not wasting any time, and watch these final couple of strokes on the right-hand side of your screen there. Just so intense how much power these guys can put into that. And again, you mentioned that block flying away. These guys could be professional baseball players the way they're hitting those things like baseball. It's unbelievable. Unreal. And this guy is 16 years old. Yeah. <laughs> Oliver Reinhardt looks yeah. over, he's like, what? I thought I had you. <laughs> how, how fantastic was that? Yeah. So here's the overall standing. Uh, of course, Grainwald with that performance uh, up on top. But take a look at the points. Only one 
between him and uh, Wanso, and Reinhardt is there in third position, so he's definitely Just three in points back. Well. So he's definitely in the mix as well. But you can't count anybody out in the top uh, seven, I would say, because uh, Robin Haas in seventh place is twenty points. So. Yeah, and if uh, we're going to take a quick look at the nation's ranking. Yep, Go. absolutely, because that's what it's all about. You need both athletes uh, competing together, and uh, there's the points Ooh. added up. Here we have. Poland on top with 19 points total. France right behind them. Then Switzerland, but the difference between Poland and France at the moment is 6.5 points. Excuse me, 5.5 points. So it's real not close, I'm going to say. Uh, but between France and Switzerland... It's 13-5-0 uh, to 12 5 -0. So, I mean, it's going to be a battle for second place at the moment, but we've still got a lot of action coming our way. There's two more disciplines to go, so uh, we're not going to count anybody out at this point. No way, and we're definitely not going to count out Pia because she's got someone in Kesselhaus who wants to tell us all about the last discipline. Over to you guys. Oh, yes. Thank you very much. Well, we're now on site. I am having the next interview. Das war gerade amazing. Das war gerade richtig cool. Du bist jetzt am zweiten Platz. Wie, wie, wie fühlst du dich? Also, was sind die Emotionen? Doch, ich fühle mich ziemlich gut. Ich hätte doch gerne den äh, Simon besiegen können. Doch, es wäre ja. schön gewesen. Das kann ich mir natürlich vorstellen. Aber nach diesem Tag jetzt heute, was sind so deine Pläne? Also, wenn du in Zukunft quasi deine Timbersports-Karriere, wie schaut die aus? Sicher mal bei den Pros etwas Unruhe stiften. Das wäre schon cool. <lacht> Finde ich sehr cool. Ich drücke dir die Daumen. Dankeschön. So, I asked first um, how he's feeling, because he's second now. Um, and he said he feels amazing, but he could have done better. He would have loved to beat Simon. Um, but anyway, I also asked for the future, like his Timber Sports career. And he said he wants to mix up um, the pros and beat them a little up, right? Yeah. And... We'll see us soon, hopefully, in the next heat. And now back to Munich, to you guys. <laughs> Wants to mix it up with the pros and yeah. cause some problems. Did kiss my <laughs> axe, you know. Kiss my <laughs> axe. <laughs> exactly. That's the perfect hashtag for the way that, that Oliver came out there. And uh, you know what? I'm telling you, that kid is going to come up and he is going to cause some drama with the pros. Absolutely. Well, I wish him best of luck, especially yeah. for the single buck that's coming up right now. Single buck. The single buck is a one-man saw about two meters long. With this, the athletes have to cut off a complete disc from a 40 centimeter thick wooden block. The perfect interplay between rhythm and strength is the key to success. The two meter long cross cut saw used for the single buck discipline is made especially for competition. A series of consistently patterned 10 centimeter long teeth are cut with a laser on one side of the saw and then hand sharpened. Saw teeth are divided into two types, cutters and rakers, just like on the old school saws. The saw weighs about five kilos and its base price starts at around 1,500 euros. Starting order heat one, uh, that will be Adam Björns take on Quinten Ferhardt in heat two. Sebastian Barzo against Mike Bröckmann in heat three. Edwin Carlson will take on Robin Konicek in heat four. We'll see Mikolai Grönwald and Danny Fielbert in heat five. It will be Lukas Wagesreiter taking on Simon Grönwald. Heat six, Loic Vincent against Michael Perrin. In heat seven, Oliver Reinhardt take on Robin Haas, uh, the Swiss duel. And finally, in heat eight, Marcel Steinkemper against Alessandro Giappioni. Take it away, Troy Mannering. Let's do this. Get the single buck misery whips ready for the pain and gain. <laughs> it's a big saw. It's old school. It is taking it back to the origins of cutting down trees and splitting them and everything. Look at that beast right there. There's a reason why they call this the misery whip or the pain whip. It is a bear. To get it started and to keep it going, you need to have flow and power, but the angle has to be just right as well. If you hook up and that saw stops, restarting it is a nightmare and kills your time and your energy. 
You're going to see a lot of different styles in this particular discipline as well. You're going to have guys that will start off with choppy quick cuts, and then they'll graduate into long flowing strokes. There'll be other guys that just want to try and push that thing through as quickly as possible with those short sloppy cuts. And both of these gentlemen, Ferhat, I would say he's a little bit more of that choppy kind of cutter. And Björns is trying for those long strokes and it seems to have worked out for him as he's got himself a personal best with a time of 24.52. And Ferhat has a personal best as well with a time of 27.19. So again, love to see those personal bests fall. That's always good, no matter what you think the time is, good or bad. But those personal bests mean that these guys are improving with each stroke of the saw. And that is a critical thing here, is just keeping that saw stroking and moving. Okay, both cuts are good. All right, so it's official. Both of those personal bests will stand. Adjusted times 24.32 and 26.93 as our stage crew will get that stage ready and we take a look at the slow-mo. Now, off the top here, I mentioned uh, different styles and you'll see the Swedish style tends to be a little bit more long strokes. In this case, he didn't really get that saw completely into the log and use the whole thing, but there you could see from uh, Quinton Ferhert. He was a bit shorter with each of those cuts, just using the middle section of the saw. And there you see also a bit of a stick and getting that saw restarted, you could tell that that struggle made all the difference in how much time it took him to get to the bottom of that cookie. And uh, he did get it back going and still had a very solid time as we move on to our next heat here in the single buck, Sebastian Bateau against Mike Brookman. So again, keep an eye on the styles of these two guys and see if you can spot the differences. Is one of them pulling the saw right through the entire block? Or are their cuts choppy and short? Both work. Both can be functional, but one is sometimes a little bit more efficient than the other. And obviously, if you can keep that saw moving and use the entire length of the saw, then you're getting a more efficient and quicker cut. see Sebastian Bateau and now he's doing a good oh no Sebastian Bateau got hooked up just when I was going to give him a little bit of a compliment on getting that saw started and using the entire length of the saw meanwhile Mike Brokman has got those short choppy cuts going he's got to be careful here though as he gets to the bottom though that he doesn't twist that saw and break the cookie off and that's a critical thing there, but Sebastian Bateau got back into the flow, managed to use the whole length of the saw, and had a nice time of 21-29. Mike Brokman off the pace a little bit there with a 27-44, but still, both of these guys nailing personal best so far. All four athletes that have competed in the first two heats, personal best, Marcus. Wow, that's uh, impressive. That's all I can say to this. And again, the time's absolutely amazing, under 30 seconds. Okay, well, uh, I'm always a bit pessimistic, you know, when I think it's all down <laughs> to this pressure and it's the rookies. And, you know, they're great in practice, but it's, it's a big difference between being good in practice and, and being good in competition. And all 16 athletes so far have, have been very impressive. And, and, I mean, look at those times. You just said it. Yep. Four personal bests and four times under 30 seconds. So all I can say is, wow. He had to quote a colleague of mine, look at the time! You know Rob Warner, I'm sure. Um, one of the big characters from the mountain bike world. But I mean, it's, it's really accurate to scream that in some of these cases because, you know, talking about how quickly they can get through this 27 centimeter block, it's just incredible. And uh, actually, I think this is the 32 centimeter block, isn't it? Whatever, it's a big chunk of wood that they've got to cut through. And here you saw those two different styles that I talked about earlier with Quentin Fairhead going for those choppy short and quick strokes through the middle of the saw and Adam Björns using as much of the saw as he possibly could to try, or excuse me, Sebastian Bateau using as much of the saw as he possibly could to really get a nice long stroke and a cut. And I just, I just did it again. It was uh, Mike Brokman that uh, was using those choppy cuts. Okay, let's see if we can get Heat 3 right, Troy. Uh, 
All right, Edvin Carlsen going up against Robin Konacek. So Sweden against Austria. Now you see what he's doing right there. Edvin Carlsen has the saw upside down and he's placed it in that section that they've already approved as being pre-cut and to set the saw up. And what he's done there is he has just stroked the saw through a couple of times to give him that feeling of his foot positioning and to make sure that he has the flow on the angle of the saw that he needs. So here we go. Eddie. Different stances Ready. as well. You can see Stand between these two. to your timber. Three, two, one, go! Konacek starting with a shorter stance. Carlson with a longer stance. And again, talking about that Swedish style, trying to utilize the entire length of the saw. Konacek also going through the middle, doing pretty well here, all things considered, as Konacek looks like he might be so close behind Carlson. <laughs> I, I had to flow that one in there because they were really quick. And a couple more personal bests go by the wayside. As we saw last weekend, in this very discipline, personal bests all around the neighborhood. It is right, crazy the improvements these guys are making. Love it. Edvin Carlson with the time to beat so far with a 14.24 and a personal best. Robin Konacek right behind him, only 45 hundredths of a second back with a 14.69. And uh, yeah, again, two weekends in a row. Absolutely impressive performances by all of these guys. Personal best dropping like flies in a dirty can of soup. It's crazy. <laughs> just, just imagine being in the next heat. And, you know, if I don't do a personal yeah. best, I, I... I might as well leave. I'm out. I'm finished. <laughs> That's I'm it. done for you the know. day. Thanks. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Mom, can you get me a glass of milk and some chocolate chip cookies? I'm coming home early. That's crazy. Yeah. I mean, look how close this was, though. One half of a stroke. But that especially is the in difference this discipline, maker. why is there so much improvement in that discipline? It's I, one of the most difficult disciplines. It is one of the most difficult disciplines, not because of the weight of the saw or any of that. It's because small angles technique. can make a huge difference. It's about the technique. And obviously, these guys have seen some of the pros and how the times are working with them and really focusing on probably video material to try and improve themselves. Rookie Academy maybe also. Rookie Academy plays a huge role. That was a big thing this year, which I think was absolutely fantastic. An option, an opportunity for these rookies to learn from some legends in the sport on how to improve at each of the aspects. And again, there's that saw upside down by both of these athletes just checking their stroke positioning, foot positioning, and everything to make sure they're really feeling good about this one. Mikolai Grunwald up against Danny Fiebert. Danny Fiebert, yeah. Genau, heat number four. Oh, wow. Ready. <laughs> Ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one. Go! So Mikael Grunwald, Mikolai Grunwald on the left-hand side, Danny Fielwert on the right-hand side. You can see Grunwald. He's got some good flow, though, but he got a little bit of a hookup as he comes down towards the bottom. And it's going to be a nice personal best for him as what well. Else? 14, what else? What else? And a personal <laughs> best for Fielwert as well. Unbelievable. <laughs> wow. That is bananas. I love it. I love it. So both Germany and Poland dropping some discs and dropping some personal bests. <laughs> okay, both cuts are good. Oh, it is the fist. Yeah. Lovely. Yes. Mikhail Gru uh, Mikolai Grunwald moves up into second place in single buck. And Danny Fielwert moves up into fourth place in a single buck. That's going to shift the overall standings around a little bit. We'll take a look at that afterwards. But you can see here again, these guys are attacking these cuts. They're just attacking them. And there you see Grunwald. His strokes were a little bit longer than Fielwert. And Fielwert did get hooked up a couple of times there. What we should mention also is that this discipline has two possibilities. There is with assistance and without assistance. With assistance has a wedger and a luber or one person does wedging and lubing and without assistance is what you're seeing here today. So there is a bigger chance for that block to bind on the saw making it more difficult for these guys. So their times are even more impressive because of that. 
and only personal best so far as we're halfway through. Here we have the results so far from eight, uh, from six, eight athletes, 16 all together, and all eight athletes that have been competing so far yep. have reached the personal best. And to one of them, uh, Mikolaj Grönwald, uh, we'll be talking in just a second because I think uh, that Pia has him in uh, Kesselhaus. Uh, here we have it, Grönwald on the overall standings, leading at the moment, and I'm very sure he's happy about that. Mm -hmm. uh, hopefully, uh, Pia can tell us we're right and we're not mistaken. That was very, very impressive so far. Seven points ahead. So let's uh, move back to Pia. No, you're not mistaken. Um, I'm having Mikolai Grünwald next to me with a personal best. Congratulations, that was amazing. What are you thinking while you complete the discipline? Thank you. I think it's a very good start with myself and I have best time with myself and I had in my head I must fast, 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 fast and I have. Nice. You've done great. <laughs> um, and now one more discipline is to come. What, what are you expecting? What are you thinking is, gonna, is this going to be like? I think underhand very strong and most. So I think I must best. Let's go. The motivation is there. I wish you luck. All the best. And yeah, thank you for the interview. Thank you for your time. We'll hand it back to you, Troy and Marcus. Oh. All right, Lukas Vargasreiter and Simon Grünwald. Another Grünwald in the mix. Uh, maybe he's going to have a personal best as well. Who knows? Uh, what else? <laughs> uh, what else? Let's not jinx these guys, though. I mean, really, come on. But the wood seems to be really, really, really... I don't know uh, what to say about the wood today. Uh, Troy, I think I'm, it's I, absolutely fixed up. I'm, I'm, I'm a bit worried if Mikolai says uh, the last discipline, the underhand job, is the one he's looking forward to. Yeah. Oh, my word. <laughs> he's, he's, he's on fire. Well, it's interesting. We mix things up a little bit because normally we're doing the underhand chop first in the uh, discipline row, uh, and this time around. But it's very cool to have it the other way around. Well, yeah. yeah. I mean, we've kind of mixed the guys up a little Andy. bit too, so they probably got that Andy. going through their heads as Stand well. To your Here we go. Timber. Three, two, one, go. So Lucas Vargas right there on the left hand side of your screen, Simon Grunwald on the right hand side of your screen. And there you can see Lucas Vargas right there. Oh, a big hookup for him, but he was using the entire length of the saw. Two big hookups for Lucas Vargas right there. That is a major problem. And that means that Simon Grunwald is going to get through with a time of 12.51. Oh my goodness, I do believe we have a new world record. This is still unofficial. This is absolutely unofficial until we get the thumbs up from our judge though. But at 12.28, when it's adjusted, let's see. Okay, okay, let's see. What our okay. judges have to say. Your cut was good and your cut was very good. New world record. <laughs> your cut was very good. <laughs> your That's cut was a very world good. record. <laughs> so we have 10 personal oh bests my God. and a world record in this discipline. This and is and I, I have to point out, Lukas Vagasreiter got his saw stuck at the worst possible time, not once, but twice, and still cut a personal best of 1682. And Simon Grunwald. And you know what he's going to do? He's going to go back and shake his finger in his brother's face and say, ha na 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 I got a world record. No, I don't think he's going to do that. But seriously, Six I mean, years old. So, unbelievable. 12.28 seconds, a world record for the juniors. And there's those two hookups I was talking about by Vargas Reiter. Unfortunate. Otherwise, he may have been right there in that world record standing as well. Who knows? Do we have an age limit, uh, an age that you have to reach before you're allowed to compete with the pros? I mean, this guy is... <laughs> I have no idea. I have no idea. I mean, uh, I, I think you would need to be a minimum of 18, but if that's the case, there's going to be a lot of... you want to wait two years for that guy? Of, yeah. Uh, <laughs> do you want to have to deal with the guy for no! two years as a rookie? No. <laughs> that's the question. <laughs> Lift it up to 21. I mean, unbelievable. What a great job by Simon Grunwald, who has now taken over the top spot in the rankings with 44 points. Mikolai Grunwald right behind him with 37 points. So Poland is so dominating easy. at the moment. All right. Loïc Voisson going up against Michel Perrin. Uh, it's France against Italy. So serious looking, these guys. So serious. 
There's Loïc Poinçon. Loïc Poinçon, personal best is 1414. Michel Perrine, personal best 1450. So these guys are real, real close to each other. And the way the wood's been running today, who knows what's going to happen. We might even see a new world record between these two guys. It's anybody's guess at this point. Athletes, ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. All right, no debate about the start there. That looked really even. And Loïc Boisson attacking that like he's got a motor. And he's using the entire length of the saw. He is ripping through this block. Is he going to do it? And Michel Perrine with a 13-14. And Boisson, I thought he was going to be much faster than that, with a 14-85. Holy smokes. Loïc Foinçon, unbelievably, is the only guy so far who doesn't have a personal best. Oh, I don't even know where to go with this. And he's he was still in the middle of the pack. Yeah, he yeah, was he's... motoring. Okay, both cuts are good. Oh, my word. Yeah. Every single athlete so far under 30 seconds. That is... I just don't know what to say. Under 30 seconds. Almost uh, everybody's under 25, 26. I mean... 27.21 is the slowest time we've had so far. But and like I said, cutting a loaf of bread takes me longer than that. And it's a kind of magical barrier to say, okay, if you're under 30 seconds, mate, you're, you're a fantastic athlete. You know, yeah. you know how to work the single buck. But, uh, I mean, uh, ju yes, just watching these slow motions, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's no surprise. Yeah, and these there's, are interestingly athletes. enough, though, you saw both of them with really, really fast strokes there was the big hookup for Louis Voisson that was the problem right there for his personal best not happening but both of them using really fast strokes the difference was that Louis Voisson you actually saw the tip of the saw disappear into that block on the backstroke right there bang it's gone yeah and then he was really utilizing the entire length of the saw and the speed on top of it the only difference was that he got hooked up pretty badly near the bottom of his cut and the wood bound on his, on his saw, and he had to restart. Okay, next heat up, Oliver Reinhardt and Robin Haas. The Swiss duo in heat number seven. And their personal bests are not too bad at all. Not at all. 13.99 personal best for Robin Haas, so this is definitely the stronger discipline between these two guys. But Oliver Reinhardt has been so solid this year. He's focused. He is really on point. And, uh, I mean, his winning streak in the last two to three years is proof in the pudding right there. And Robin Haas is going to face Oliver Reinhardt head-to-head. Head. Here we go. to your timber. Three, two, one, go! So you can see Robin Haas starting off with quick, choppy strokes, and then Oliver Reinhardt gets into using the entire length of the saw. Robin Haas doing the same. It's going to be a close one between these two, but it's going to be Robin Haas. Oh, and he just got that little knuckle off the bottom as well with a lucky final stroke. Otherwise, it could be a DQ for Robin Haas having an incomplete cookie. The judges will look close at that one, and you can see there's a little bit of worry on Robin Haas's face. All right, I don't see a flag on the play. That's good news. Okay, both cuts are good. All right, no suspension here with, the, with the, the craziness. And again, a couple of personal bests. Again, dropping down. So uh, Oliver Reinhardt moves up into second place with that time of 1240. Robin Haas with a 1294. And it was just by virtue of that last little knuckle on the bottom of his cut. I don't know if we'll get to see that in the slow-mo, but right here, you can see the cookie drop and then the saw actually hung on that last little bit that was hanging there on the bottom of the cut. Let's see if we could see it here. And there it is. And he needs to get that done. See, and that was an important final cut. And that was a really key aspect right there from Robin Haas. He saw it. He recognized it. He cut it off. Had he not done that and walked away from it, that would have been a DQ for an incomplete cookie. So a very good job for that man to recognize where he was with that. And he sits now in fourth place in the single buck with one heat still to go.
So only one more heat missing, and that, of course, is Marcel Steinkemper against Alessandro Ciapponi. I always try and read that name because I just, <laughs> I just love it. Yeah. Uh, what about the personal bests? Um, They're 15, not... Uh, the, I mean, you know, 12, uh, 1228 is the fastest at the moment. Um, they're a little bit outside of middle of the pack here in their personal best, but that's not saying anything at this point because everybody else were outside of their personal best at the start of this competition. So the way things are going, personal best uh, for these two guys could well be gone as well, hopefully. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. Chiapone, another opportunity here to improve, but right off the hop, he got that saw stuck. Marcel Steinkamper, on the other hand, got it moving really quickly, oh, wow. and he's kept going. Very good flow for Marcel Steinkamper. Chiapone struggling to try and catch up. Oh! oh! Steinkamper with a fantastic personal best, 13.22, and he just obliterated his old personal best by three seconds and change. Wow. So Chia Pony's time, looking for it here. Hasn't come across to my screen. Ah, there it is, 1860. So uh, no personal right, best for him either. Are. Good. But Marsa Steinkamper with a great 1297 by adjustment. Another personal best hits the floor with the cookie and a good job all around. So 1860 for uh, Alessandro Chiaponi, who is sitting in 12th, and Marcel Steinkemper in a really solid fifth place there as we take a look back at the slow-mo. And it was the the start was great for Steinkemper. There's just no two ways about it. He's really been practicing that discipline, and he is right on top of his game there, but obviously looks disappointed with the way that cut went. Unbelievably so. Um, Meanwhile, Chiapone on the right-hand side, you can see choppy cuts, a couple of stops, a couple of hookups. The one thing that I've noticed about all of these guys so far, not a single guy has had the uh, uh, the violin bow happen to them. <laughs> so that's a good thing because when the violin bow happens, boy, oh. that's a tough one because that thing kicks back on you and you have to restart the saw. Well, let's take a look at the overall standings. Uh, no surprise with uh, Greenwald being there. With 44 points, uh, the 16-year-old uh, really showing mm -hmm. us what he's capable of oh, yeah. doing. Wow. Uh, Oliver Reinhardt from uh, Switzerland in second, and uh, Michael Perrin from Italy uh, is there in third position. But of course, both athletes count. So that means uh, for the Nations Cup, uh, we're going to have to add all the points uh, before the pros are going to be here. And I think we can take a look at the Nations Cup now. Wow, yeah. Poland is up there on top still. But look at not that far ahead of Switzerland anymore. Absolutely. And uh, we just saw Marcel uh, <laughs> Steinkemper uh, not being too happy with his time, even though it was a absolutely amazing personal best. And hopefully Pia will find out for us why Marcel was shaking his head. So Pia and Marcel, how are you guys doing in Kesslaus? We are doing great, thank you. As you just mentioned, Marcel Steinkemper, right next to me, you were shaking your head when you saw your time, even though it's a personal best. Why? Yeah, I had some hiccups and both the saw a little bit that cost some seconds, but all in all, it was a good cut. It was amazing. <laughs> well, do you have some kind of ritual when you're right before you go on stage? Like something you do every time to just have luck? Yeah, it's uh, it's more than more before going on stage and like putting on first the right chainmail and the shoes and stuff and yeah, so you get uh, in a rhythm before the competition and then you are less nervous. And do you do it always in the same order, like always one thing after the other, or can you mix it up? No, I don't mix it up. I do it all in the same order, and okay. that's the key, <laughs> maybe. I got that. I, I get that. So thank you for your time and thank, thanks for the interview. And we'll hand back to Munich now. <laughs> <laughs> ah, nice. Absolutely. Superstition rules the day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sometimes put on my left sock before my right sock, but that's about it, you know. Yeah. I always keep that order going. I try and jump into my pants <laughs> I don't want to when I wear pants. <laughs> Not very often, though. <laughs> 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 we'll talk about that later. Now we're ready for the underhand job, our last discipline.
Underhand Chop In the past, the underhand chop technique was used to split logs. Standing on a horizontally anchored block, the athletes use an axe to cut through a 30 centimeter log. The block has to be worked from both sides. The axes used in timber sports definitely can't be bought at your local hardware store. Made from special steel, the blade is hand sanded with an angle of 13 to 16 degrees. It's custom built and carefully adjusted for each competition. The weight is around three kilos and it's about 80 centimeters long. The blade is so sharp that you could shave with it. Starts list for the underhand chop in heat one, Adam Björns against Quinten Ferhardt. In heat two, Mike Brökman against Sebastian Batzo. In heat three, the Austrians, Robin Konicek and Lukas de Vages Reiter. In heat four, Edwin Carlson and Denny Filbert. Heat five, Robin Haas and Mikael Perrin. Loic Voisson and Alessandro Ciappioni in heat six. In heat seven, Mikolai Grönwald and Oliver Reinhardt. And finally, in heat eight, Marcel Steinkemper and Simon Grönwald. All right, the underhand chop is traditionally the discipline that we start with. So uh, we're getting into it right away with our first heat, Adam Björns and Andy, Quinton Fahert. Ready, stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go! Ooh, a step off by Björns. That's going to cost him a little bit in time. You also want to make sure that you stay on top of that block as solidly as possible and you want to use as much of that gravity on your swing as possible. Now Björns and Ferhat, both of them moving over to the other side of their block almost at the same time here and they're both really struggling to try and get through it as cleanly as possible. Just passing the 30 second mark here. Fastest in the world doing this in uh, I think 25 seconds is the world record. Something ridiculously quick. And it's going to be Bjorns with a personal best getting through in 43.06. And again, as I've said all show long, that's unofficial until our judges give us the go-ahead. And for Hert with a personal best of 51.90. So again, the personal best going down, which was what we love to see absolutely. And this is uh, also a tough discipline, especially after you've gone through all of the other disciplines okay, up to this point. Are good. So fist bumps as they leave the stage and our crew will come on to the stage to clean up and reset the stands as quickly as possible as we take a look at the slow-mo action here. Athletes are allowed to bring two axes onto the stage so if something does happen with one axe mid competition they can go to their other axe but that seldom happens because that is just a time killer and you can see here how accurate those cuts are and in this particular discipline those cuts need to be very accurate because those two footholds where the guys are standing if they cut into those footholds the investigation will happen a flag will drop and there will be a dq so you're not actually allowed to cut into the marked footholds so it's really important that your accuracy is on point with the underhand chop as well you kind of don't want to hammer your foot either these guys do have protective socks and or shoes on but nevertheless you know hammering your foot with that axe is going to break a toe if it's not going to cut something off so uh, again all important to have the safety aspects in mind with every single discipline in steel timber sports all right heat number two here with mike brockman against sebastian bateau Wow, their personal bests are really right on with each other. And I just saw that uh, the world record there was well under 25, 14 and change. So that's pretty fast, though, wouldn't you say, Marcus? Oh, yes, indeed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are we sure that world record wasn't for like a motor saw discipline on this or something like that? That's just nuts. I mean, if you think about it, Guys don't cut through with the stock saw that fast. You're actually right. Yeah? Ready, 
stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. So Mike Brokman on the right-hand side of the screen now in the very bright shirt. Sebastian Bato on the left in the blue. Both these guys slabbing out really nicely. What I'm noticing about Sebastian Bateau is his accuracy is so on point, looking very good. I didn't really get a close look at Brokman's block there, but as they cut through the front side now after they switched over, it's also looking really nice on Brokman as well. Both of these guys having really, really nice accurate shots. And look at that, it's almost like they synced up their, uh, their axes getting stuck at the same time. And it's going to be Brokman through in 35-39, a personal best. And oh, a massive stick for Bateau two times now. That's killing his time absolutely as he gets three big sticks and finally gets through in 50.07. He'll be disappointed by that because those huge axe sticks, I think he was trying to, you know, hit one into the far left field with those last couple of hits and he got that axe head stuck in the block with just a little bit too much power. All right, both cuts are good. But I reckon that's something you probably have to learn as a rookie, not always using your full amount of power, but, but uh, pacing the power in a way. Absolutely. I mean, that's what the rookie competitions are all about, is just to learn what works best for you. And you also, over time, you tend to get a good feeling for the wood. I mean, you talk to any of the pros, and they know after the first hit or two what the wood is like and how much power they can actually throw into that log to really get the most efficient cuts out of it. I mean, that's just time and experience. Yeah, that's high-level sports. Just thinking of tennis, for instance, is very similar. You know, as a youngster, they think they just have to hit every ball as hard as they can. Yeah. Nope, it's not always the best idea. Yeah, you, you, know, you yeah. need top spin, do you need bottom spin, you want to try and hook it. There's all sorts of things going on. It's the same it's the, exactly the same in timber sports as well. The angle of the axe plays a role. And these guys know exactly, you know, if they have to angle it a little bit more or a little bit less to get a, a bigger slab out or something like that. And, and you know, the accuracy of their hits is, is playing a big role too. So, I mean, these are all things that are going to come over time. But that's what we've been talking about all day long with these rookies and their improvements along the way. It's just fantastic. The crop of young talent that's coming up through the scene. All right, Robin Konacek going up against Lukas Vagasreiter. This is that all-Austrian final, or not final, but this is that all-Austrian battle that we saw oh, earlier on like as a, well. It's going to feel yeah, like a final for them. Exactly. Yeah. No, they, I, I believe they went up against each other in the standing block chop as well. So these two guys getting into the chopping disciplines against each other, and they'll be familiar with each other's style. They'll be familiar with each other's, uh, you know, um, way of doing things. Ready. So let's see how that uh, pans out for these two timber. here against each other. Three, two, one. Go! Vagas Knight on the right hand side, and well, now the left hand side from the overhead view there. And Konacek on the right. And both of these guys, really nice initial cuts on the first side. And pretty soon we'll see both of them move over. Yep, there's Vagas right there and Konacek. Konacek steps down, uh, not once but twice, I believe, but he's got to stay up on top of that block to keep hitting. You cannot swing the axe with a foot on the ground. It needs to be in the footholds. Konacek, Vagas right there, and it's going to be Vagas right there with a personal best and an absolute scream of satisfaction, 28-97. What a great job by him. Konacek still trying to get through on his second side. He's done it with a 48-18. One final blow, just to be sure, but I do believe they stopped the clock at 48.18. There'll be an adjusted time from competition control, and they'll check the blocks to make sure everything is copacetic. Okay, both cuts are good. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Vargas Wright is super stoked. Oh, yeah. Well, well his personal best before was 33.3. Four from nice. the rookie championships 2021 so that is an improvement that is one week old <laughs> unreal yeah yeah that's amazing good job by him so we've had four, four personal bests so far in underhand chop and lucas vargas reiter now has the top spot in the underhand chop so far so very good job by him and uh you can see here he was just really working that block a quick turnaround and uh, about one stroke behind was konacek but he stepped down, and I, I thought he stepped down twice, but it only looked like there from that angle that he stepped down once, but it was important that he get back up on that block before taking another swing and impacting the block. But uh, what a great job by Lucas Vargas Reiter, 
56, a personal best. And how stoked is he right there? <laughs> I don't wonder where the pros are sitting right now watching this. They'll be in the backstage <laughs> enjoying every moment of this and uh, adding up the points, adding no, up the no. points. But I guarantee you throughout this whole process, the pros were back there and the rookies would come back and the pros would say, OK, the following things need to improve. You did great here. So for sure, they're providing advice and everything in the back. And this is one of those things with this particular setup on this day is that the pros are there in the mix during the competition to be able to assist the rookies in taking the next steps. And this is maybe one of the reasons why we're seeing so many of these records fall today because the pros are providing advice. Next heat, Edwin Carlson, Eddie, Danny Filiat. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go! So Edwin Carlson from Sweden, Danny Filiat from Germany, Sweden on the left, Germany on the right. Boy, these guys are in sync, switching over to the other side exactly at the same time. Now they're targeting, or their hits are just a little bit out of sync, but their first side was basically rhythm is a dancer. And it's Carlson, 23-93, and Fielbert with a 26-29. Again, two personal bests for these guys. Great job. Can't even begin to tell you how happy I am to see all these personal bests going out the window. It's just fantastic. All right, a lot of discussion going on here with the block of Fielbert. It could be a cut into the foothold. We'll see if a flag does go down. They're discussing it with him right now. They have to do it officially, and they will check everything with a fine-tooth comb here. So it is clear that they're taking a long time to look and see if there is a cut into that foothold. So they're going to make a decision here and let us know what that decision is. Oh dear. Okay, your cut was good. You have a DQ cut foothold. That is unlucky. Oh, that is unlucky, absolutely. But I talked about this right off the top. That is one of the things that is a risk in the underhand chop, especially with the rookies having so much, let's call it vim and vigor and, uh, and vinegar in their mix, that sometimes you just get a little bit overexcited, you cut into that foothold, and then you got a DQ. And that is a bummer because he did have a personal best time-wise Fantastic um, time, yeah. Yeah, it was a fantastic time, but Danny Fielviat unfortunately gets the DQ for cutting and into the foothold. Just by a fraction, because they, they had to look at it very closely. They had to look at it really closely. So, uh, what are we talking about? Half a centimeter? I would say even less. Yeah. I would say I, I'd say we're talking like literally millimeters. millimeters. Yeah, but that's how close the, these uh, these judges and their judging system is capable of checking. I mean, they've got high speed cameras all around that stage. They're checking for, you know, uh, a false start or too early start. They're checking for, you know, all sorts of different oh, things. We, and we, they can really look back at everything. Many, many times that the technology that we used in yes. steel timber sports is up on the highest level. So yeah. we can really go down to thousands of, of yeah. seconds uh, just to just to be precise. I'm not going to say it puts Swiss timing to shame, but it's pretty <laughs> darn close. I mean, it is really about the most technologically advanced system for checks and balances that there could be in any sport. And they absolutely need it because there's so much going on on stage at any given time in steel timber sports that you have to be on top of av absolutely every aspect. All right, so taking a look at the overall standings here, it's still Simon Grunwald on top with 44 points, and uh, he hasn't even gone yet in this discipline. Yeah. He's coming up, so uh, that bodes well for him. And for Poland. All right, next heat, Robin Haas, Michel Perrin. Athletes, ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. All right, good 
start for both of these guys. Michel Perrin, tall, can really utilize that to his advantage, but also has to be careful that he doesn't overpower those blows and get that axe stuck. Michel Perrin, though, is the first guy to move over to the other side, three strokes ahead of Robin Haas, who is now fighting from behind and looking like he's struggling to find those slabs that he wants to come out of the block. Michel Perrin, though, with a little bit of an advantage, and he drops it at 27.05, and it's Robin Haas at 29.99. Special on aisle four, blocks of wood from Robin Haas for $29.99. Oh, there you go. Robin Haas with a $29.99. I'll say it about 48 more times before the end of the day or until they actually update his time, which they did just did with a $29.79, and he is in fourth place in the underhand okay, both chop. Cuts are Michelle good. Perrin, and both cuts being good, Michelle Perrin is in second place with a $26.66, and I won't even go there with that number. Great start by these guys, though. Just before the gun, the upswing, and then absolutely getting into that block. So nice. You could see Robin Haas on the right-hand side there. Some big slabs coming out. He actually had some nicer slabs to start things out, and it was Michel Perrin that uh, looked like he might be starting to struggle, but he was actually over three strokes ahead of Robin Haas onto the other side, and then he just kept going with that quick axe head, really using... The, the, the pressure from his legs and his height to his advantage there. And Michel Perrin comes through with a nice time. Good enough for second place in the underhand chop. You can see how technically adept these guys are too. Bringing the hand right up to the ax head, repositioning their hands back together for the downswing there and just fantastic job by Michel Perrin from Italy and a great job to sit in second place in the underhand chop standings. All right, Loic Voisson up against Alessandro Ciapponi. Ciapponi struggled in the single buck. He did a great job in the standing block chop. His disciplines are definitely axe related with chopping so now he has to really throw down here against Loic. Effie, ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. So Chiapone going to try and work hard here and look at how quick his axe is. Boy, Chiapone not holding back. He is already onto the other side, took a quick step off of the block and he's a good four or five strokes ahead of Voisson on the other side of his block. Chiapone absolutely murdering this block and he does it in a fantastic time of 1836. A personal best for Chiapone. A great job by him. Loic Voisson trying to get through that last little couple of hits at 2781. Wow, Chiapone, you stud muffin on the block. That is just fantastic. And that is 5.6 seconds faster than Edvard Carlsen. Yeah. Now, wow. where, where were those cuts earlier on? So we know that Chiapone is solid with an axe in the hand. We know where he has to improve, and now he knows it too. All right, both cuts are good. Do so you think for Chiapone it was good that the uh, hand, hand chop came last this time? Or do you think it would have been nicer to have a start like this you know, just to be self-confident to go into the next disciplines? Tough call. Uh, because your headspace, when you've got a good run to start, is obviously better and you feel better about the next disciplines. But it's a nice way for Chiapone to finish off because it's going to be a tough time to, to, to beat for any of these other guys with 18.06. And, uh, you know, we take a look back at the slow-mos. Chiapone was just... I mean, unfortunately, we don't see if that's Chiapone there or not. I do believe it is. But uh, you just... He's so quick with the axe. It's just, you know, bang, 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 bang. And he was over to the <laughs> oh, other yeah. side, well ahead of of, uh, of Voisson. So, that, that know, is that slow motion? No, it is yeah, not. That's, this that's, is like, that's this looks like motion. real time in slow motion. Unbelievable, though. Hey, he's so quick with that axe. So we know, like I said, Chiapone, with the axe in hand, he is relentlessly good. So where he needs to improve probably more than anywhere else is his single buck. 
His single buck was disastrous, and that's the one area where if he can improve that, his game is going to go through the roof. Stock saw is okay. That's something that he's going to, to get to feel out at over time. But the one area where in this particular competition, from my perspective, it's the single buck. Yeah, and of course, if you want to move on to the pros, that has to work. That has to work. you got to have that single buck locked and loaded. Okay, Mikolai Grunwald and Oliver Reinhardt going up against each other here. So we're going to have two more heats to go. This one and the last one, and uh, Simon Grunwald Ready. will be in the last one. Here Stand we go. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. So Mikolai Grunwald on the left-hand side of your screen, Oliver Reinhardt on the right-hand side of your screen, and Reinhardt also using that quick axe head style, and he should be the first over to the other side. Mikolai Grunwald, yeah, one stroke behind Reinhardt as he now moves over to the other side too. Grunwald, Reinhardt. Oh, and Reinhardt does it in 22.97. A great time, not the fastest one on the day. And it's Grunwald in 28.65. So Reinhardt with a 22.97 slips into second place in the underhand chop standings. And Grunwald Mikolai with a 28.41 is in sixth in the underhand chop standings. No investigations on the stand. That's always a good okay, sign. Okay, both cuts are good. That's one of my favorite sentences to hear. Both cuts are good? Both cuts are <laughs> good, yeah. So only one more heat coming up. So Marcel Steinkemper and Simon Grönwald finishing the competition for the Rookies. And we're not yeah. going to have a winner's ceremony today. No, because everything is going to be counted with the pros later on. So Absolutely. if you want to see how their results are from the Rookies, you got to come back later for the pros. Oh, yeah. And it's going to be definitely worth it. Just look at these guys go. Yeah. Oliver Reinhardt there in the picture on the left-hand side of your screen. I mean, he also utilizes that quick axe. Now, it's, it's, it's something to be said. Yeah, you can swing that axe fast, but swinging it fast with power and accuracy that's another animal altogether and i mean <laughs> these guys are slowly I, I should say slowly but they're they're very slowly seeing ah yeah i can do that and then it's small details and uh, the devil is in the details as they say and that's what oliver reinhardt has been working on over his rookie career for the last couple of years and it's shown in his results i mean if you look at his results list he's got ones and twos all over the map and that is a final heat. Yes. Yes. Marcel really Steinkemper up against Simon Grunwald. I don't even know what to say about this kid, Simon. I mean, unbelievable. 16 years young. Marcel Steinkemper, he is a solid cutter when it comes to the axe. So you cannot bet him out of this one. But, I mean, Simon Grunwald, oh my goodness. I mean, his personal best here, 1685. Oh, I can't even understand where this kid gets his power. The skill level Andy. is unbelievable. Okay, Ready. here we go. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. All right, their timing is right on. It took Simon Grunwald two or three strokes before he got that rhythm. And holy smokes, folks, he's already on the other side of that block. He might be under in a uh, very fast time today. He gets another stick there. Oh, and he uh, he thought about it a little bit too much, but he got through an 1806. No personal best for him. Steinkemper steps off and he gets a 2403. So two really solid times there by both of these guys. But Simon Grunwald with the oh wow. Okay, there's been no adjustment on the time so far. But if I look at my screen, Simon Grunwald and Alessandro Chiapponi have exactly the same time. But now they've made the adjustment. And Simon Grunwald's time has gone to a 17.74, so he is just 32 hundredths of a second faster than Chiapponi. Okay, Unbelievable performance by Yeah, Germany. fantastic. And Steinkemper sitting in fifth place in the underhand chop standings. So we'll take a look at the results from the underhand chop and the overall results shortly after we look at the slow mos here. What an impressive young man that Grunwald, Simon Grunwald is, though. Both of the Grunwald boys are just absolutely fantastic. But Simon Grunwald, at 16 years of age, he has got a future in timber sports that's unlike 
anything we've seen in a long time. I can see there's going to be records falling left, right, and center with that young man on the handle of an axe or a saw. There were a couple of strokes there, a couple of drives where he thought he had that block through and just sort of hesitated a little bit, but then he needed to go back and take a couple of more hits. Otherwise, his time might have been even quicker. Still, I don't know, 17.74 is definitely quite okay. I'll take it to the bank. So that's the final results uh, for the moment. Of course, uh, like we already mentioned, uh, the big showdown is going to be at 7 p.m. together with the pros. Uh, but let's uh, take a look at just a rookie competition. And uh, it's uh, Simon Grönwald uh, that has absolutely dominated. 60 points ahead of, uh, seven points ahead of Oliver Reinhardt in second place. But Oliver Reinhardt from uh, Switzerland, I mean, what a solid competitor he is. Oh, yeah, for sure. He is probably, along with Grunwald, one of the most well-rounded timber sports athletes there is in the rookie field. And uh, I really have to say all 16 athletes were more than just impressive. Yep. And, and I just love the idea where we have the, the, the Rookies Academy. We have this new format, like you mentioned, with the pros being there for the youngsters. And uh, we have the Nations Cup yep. with uh, Poland being up front, 17.5 uh, points. Switzerland on position two, 14.5 and Italy in third position with 11.5 points that they take along uh, before the pros start into yep. their competition. And of course, we want to have one more interview from the Kessel House. And uh, Mikhail Perrin is with Pia at the moment, as far as I have been told. And I can see Pia smiling in the background. Um, let's hear it from you guys in Kessel House. Yes, you've been right. I'm here with... Michelle Perrin, and we're here for the last interview. Michelle, you've done really great throughout the whole competition. What is your thought now? What are you thinking in, in hindsight? I think I do my best. Uh, I think I can do a little bit better, but uh, when you go on the stage, uh, it's, uh, it's always a bit nervous. and uh, And... What he's doing to the, the, the stage uh, is uh, like that. <laughs> and do you have hopes for tonight? Because tonight's like the great end with all the pros. Do you think Italy can win? I think Italy can make uh, a great competition with the two guys that come uh, after. They are really strong and uh, I hope uh, to, uh, we can get on the, on the podium. Yes. I hope so too. Thanks for sharing your thoughts. Buza <laughs> And I say thank you for staying with us until now. We'll see each other at 7 o'clock because there the competition will continue with the pros. I'm already very keen and I promise you I'll provide you with some hindsight info and with some opinions of the athletes again. Well, amazing trophies will, be, will there be too. So get a rest, get a break and come back at 7 p.m. Now, one last time, back to the studio to you, Troy and Marcus. Oh, yeah, we are ready for the final countdown. P has already said it at 7 p.m. That's going to be yeah. the big, big showdown with the pros competing. But, of course, they are depending on the points uh, they got from the rookies. So that yeah. makes it even more interesting. Tough job for the rookies to start this thing off, but uh, Poland's done a great job so far. It's not over yet. The pros are still in the mix, so we've got a lot more action to come at 7 p.m., so make sure you come back and join us then because that's when we're going to see the real pressure come under for these pros. And, I mean, they watched the rookies do their thing, and now we're going to watch them do their thing and uh, see if we can do it. So it's time for the highlights of the day before we hopefully see you all again at uh, 7 o'clock. Till then... Bye-bye, ciao und baba. We'll be back. <laughs>